Welcome back everyone. I'm Gareth with Creative Connors. In this video, I wanna continue exploring the trainee by looking deeper into one of the primary components used in its control circuit, switches. The trainee, if you don't know, is a great way to learn the fundamentals of scenic automation. The small size is convenient for experimenting just about anywhere, and at 200 bucks, it's gonna go easy on your budget too. I'll put a link below if you're interested in picking one up. All right, let's dig into switches. And I can almost hear you thinking, Gareth, how much is there to talk about switches? Well, I'd say there's roughly four things. And a side note, actuators, poles, throws, contact types, and then I'd like to spend a minute or two talking about packaging options, how switches are made. All right, let's start with actuators. Actuators are the part of the switch that you touch to operate. You press the button on push button switches. A mushroom switch is like a specialty variant that you press to actuate and twist to release. Red ones are for emergency stop circuits, but yellow ones are used for machine stop circuits. A machine stop is like an emergency stop in that it does initiate an immediate halt but it only affects one machine, whereas an emergency stop stops the entire automation system. You flip toggle switches. Sometimes these are also called bat switches. You twist selector switches. And here's a couple of different varieties. Any of these actuators can be momentary like this one, meaning that they spring back to the default state, or they could be maintained, meaning that they stay put until you change them back. Even though we kind of associate momentary action with push buttons and maintained action with toggle switches, you can certainly get maintained push buttons or momentary toggles as well. Okay, moving on to poles. Actuating a switch by manipulating the actuator opens or closes one or more set of electrical contacts. The number of those sets of contacts is referred to as the poles. So a single pole switch like this one has one set of contacts where a double pole has two and a triple pole has three and so on. Each pole or set of contacts has one or more positions where it makes an electrical connection. Those positions are called throws. Let's start with the simplest, a single throw. A single throw switch only has one connection path. That path can be of two contact types, either normally open or normally closed. Let's wire up a single pole single throw, normally open switch. All right, I'm gonna power up my power supply here and I'm gonna connect 24 volts into this normally open single pole switch. And then coming out of that switch, I am going to connect it to this green light. And then I will complete the circuit just by connecting common back to the power supply. And as you can see, when the switch is not activated, nothing happens. No electricity is being conducted here. But if I press the button, the green light turns on. So when I press the button, that circuit closes, electricity flows through, the light turns on. Not terribly surprising, right? Push button, turn on light. Release button, turn off light. Okay, fair enough. Now let's wire up a single pole single throw, normally closed switch. This switch also only has one connection path. I will connect it to 24 volts again, and then the output from that switch, I'm gonna now connect it to a red light. <clears throat> and as you will see, as soon as I make this connection, the light turns on. So without pressing a button, the circuit is completed. The circuit is normally closed. If I press the button now, the circuit opens and the light turns off. So a single throw contact can either be normally open, which requires actuation to pass current through, or 
normally closed, requiring actuation to interrupt current. Now, let's look at a double throw switch. Here I've got a double throw switch, and it has three contacts. We've got the feed in, and I'm gonna connect that to 24 volts. And then there are two paths out. So depending on the position of the switch, we'll either connect to this terminal or that terminal. I'm gonna hook up one of these terminals to my yellow light. And I'm gonna connect the other terminal to the green light. And now you can see that as I flip the switch back and forth, either the green light turns on or the yellow light turns on, depending on how I flip that switch. So with a double throw contact, there are two different current paths coming out of the switch, and they're mutually exclusive. If one path is closed, the other path opens up. Pretty cool. Okay. This switch is not only double throw, but it's also double pull, meaning that there's a second set of contacts that we can hook up to a second set of circuits. So let's do that now. I'm going to connect the second pole also to my 24 volts. And this time I'm gonna grab doo, 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 the LEDs from the push buttons and now connect them up to the toggle switch. And now we've got the lights coming on in sets. So if I flip it one way, the two inner lights come on and flip it the other way, the two outer lights come on. Having multiple poles like this allows you to isolate circuits that could be running at different voltages, but they switch simultaneously. So when you select a switch, you need to consider what kind of actuator you want, how many poles you need to switch, and then the throw you need for <clears throat> each set of contacts. And if it's a single throw switch, should they be normally open or normally closed? Lastly, I wanna point out some different switch packages or construction styles. These switches are monolithic, meaning that their contacts and their actuator are built into a single housing. This is really common, and it's generally the smallest and most economical way to make a switch. But you do need to make sure that you get the right specification because you can't alter it later. Once you buy it, you got it. By contrast, an industrial switch like this is sold as modular components, which you can assemble and rearrange any number of poles, well, just about any number of poles, and contact types. So I can take a switch like this, and it might be single pole to start with. I can snap on a second pole to it to make it double pole. Uh, and I could even make a third pole here. And here I've stacked it up with two normally open circuits and a normally closed circuit. Further, I could take this whole thing off of this actuator and snap it onto a different actuator like this. These switches are generally are larger and more expensive than their monolithic counterparts, but it gives you some flexibility. If you just keep a small inventory of contacts and actuators, you can make just about any switch you want. All right, I think we've covered some good switch basics. If you'd like to learn more about this as well as more advanced scenic automation topics, please subscribe to the channel. Oh, and check out my book, The Scenic Automation Handbook. I'll put a link below so you can grab a copy. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.